And I'd like to tell you about some results that we <clears throat> obtained in a joint work with my uh, advisor, uh, Savin Anton Yurevich from uh, Moscow. So what we deal here with is uh, elliptic theory of non-local operators. Uh, some results of the elliptic theory were kindly brought to us by uh, Vladimir Evgenyevich Nazaikinsky. So probably you will uh, understand some stuff because it's not, uh, it's not really connected to everything you've heard before. So <clears throat> this is where we begin the formulation of the problem. So we have a manifold with cylindrical end, uh, ends, which is a, a manifold M containing sub-manifold K such that the completion is uh, diffeomorphic to a cylinder. So we have two coordinates here, T and X. Um, yeah, and the base has the dimension N. So let the discrete group Z act on what M. Is what is, what is it? It's a submanifold, compact submanifold. It's a factor? No, it's not a factor. Uh, this is withdrawal K. Yeah. What? M minus K, right? M minus K, yeah. It's not a quotient. So a discrete group Z acts uh, by diffeomorphism um, G. And we consider operator of um, uh, operator one, where dk is a PDO, which means pseudo differential operator of order less or equal than m, and tk is a shift operator in um, variable t. Uh, so don't be confused that there are no periodic coefficients here yet, because <clears throat> uh, after stabilizing the coefficients in t variable and taking the Fourier transform from t to p, we get operator two. And this will be uh, the main object of our consideration. Uh, and our main goal uh, is to obtain a formula for the eta invariant for this operator. Uh, what is the eta invariant? Hmm? What is the eta invariant? Uh, let me tell about a bit uh, a bit later. Now I'll tell now I'll tell you something about the motivation. So firstly, such operators were considered by Skubachevsky in these papers. Here you can see the references. Uh, he considered uh, such operators on an infinite cylinder. So you see shifts here. Uh, and <clears throat> in 2016, Savin and Sternin considered uh, this operator T acting on a manifold with uh, isolated singularity of conical type. So after a Malin transform, we get exactly our operator. Uh, so in this paper, uh, they proved the Fredholmness property, but the index formula remains open. Now about the eta invariant. Firstly, it appeared in the famous work by Atiyah, Patodi, and Zinga in 1975. They considered elliptic self-adjoint uh, operators and they wanted to calculate the index. So the so-called eta invariant uh, appeared as the boundary correction term for the index uh, on an even dimensional compact manifold with boundary. <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, roughly speaking, uh, there is a well-known notion of uh, signature for matrices, right? So, these guys, they generalize the, no, the term of signature to infinite dimensional case. So, uh, the it in invariant uh, was an analytic um, continuation of uh, eta function, so-called eta function, which, is, um, which coincides with the signature in finite dimensional case. Uh, so, but it wasn't... Uh, it's not the only definition that we can give to it invariant. So in 1995, Milrose uh, used a different approach. He took another invariant called winding number. Um, uh, and he wanted to generalize the winding number. I will tell you about uh, that, that invariant on the next slide. Uh, he used uh, parameter-dependent PDOs, pseudo-differential operators. And we intend to generalize uh, Milrow's result to the case of our operators. So he had, uh, let me remind you, uh, he had just PDO with a parameter, but we have uh, a sum, such sums, where DK, each DK is a PDO, parameter-dependent PDO. So the sum can be finite or infinite, it doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, okay. So this is the winding, no winding number. So let's imagine that we have a complex non-vanishing complex valued function uh, function or matrix valued function f. So this is um, formula three gives us winding number formula. So this is for a complex valued function and this is for matrix valued function. Um, 
so and we assume that uh, there exist limits of function f. So in this case, this number, the winding number, uh, gives the number of revolutions of the point f of p around zero, or determinant of f of p in this case. Uh, so we are interested in infinite dimensional generalization of formula three. So as we can see, uh, there is a trace and there is an integral. So we have two problems because the trace may, may fail to exist. We need uh, the operator to be of trace class and the integral may diverge. So we need to define certain regularizations of the trace and the integral. So on this slide, uh, you can see the Melrose approach. So this is uh, what he proposed. So A of Q uh, is a parameter dependent PDO. And as we know from the theory of such operators, uh, if we take its derivative uh, with respect to the parameter, its order can be lowered. lowered. So we take uh, L times where, uh, okay, it's not set here, but L is supposed to be greater than uh, the operator order plus dimension of the uh, manifold. So after that, the trace exists, and then we take uh, integrals so the the order is, uh, is made high again. Uh, after that, so this is a, a TR capital. Uh, this is the regularized trace. After that, um, we take regularized integral because the trace may, they, um, may grow at infinity. And it appears that uh, if F from special space, uh, it has special asymptotics at infinity, uh, it's not shown here, such integral from minus t to t, when t goes to infinity, tends to infinity, the integral has these asymptotics. So we take the zero coefficient, and we say that this is our um, this is our regularized integral. So after that, having these two regularizations, we have we can define the eta invariant. So this is the generalization generalization of the winding number. So this is the inverse, and this is the uh, derivative uh, by p. And also, this formula is actually the generalization of atiapa todi zinga um, uh, eta invariant in case when uh, the family D of p equals p minus i a, where a is elliptic self adjoint first order differential operator. So uh, we would be happy if we could just use this approach and do the same for our operators, but uh, <clears throat> we had a problem that uh, on this step, uh, this step just doesn't work because we have a uh, composition of uh, PDO with an exponent and by Leibniz rule, it, uh, such differenti differentiation doesn't always um, lower the order. So we had to uh, find another regularization of the integral and here it is shown. Uh, so yeah, these are the main problems that we have to face. Uh, so this says what we need to lower and uh -huh. mm -hmm. so to, <clears throat> uh, to find an alternative to differentiation, we introduce space S asymptotical of R consisting of uh, smooth functions with special asymptotics at infinity. Uh, they look like this, and here C, I, and D, G plus minus are smooth one periodic functions. Okay, so uh, we define the difference derivative operator as this, so we denote it delta, so we just take a finite difference. And it appears to, this operator appears to lower the order of our operator. So first of all, this is a lemma, this is actually the main technical result, result of our work. Uh, operator delta acting in these spaces is an isomorphism. Uh, second result, this operator lowers the order of our operator by one. Maybe so, we could delta again. Yeah. Okay, so we just need to take uh, uh, the derivative L times. So the order is lowered, so it's trace class, and then we just come back. So this is our trace, regularized trace. And here L is greater or equal than N plus M, where N is the dimension of our manifold, and M is the order of our operator. Um, then, uh, the regularized trace, this one, TR capital, appears to be in this class. Mm -hmm. And we should note that uh, we can take different L's. It's just supposed to be greater than this number. So when we take different L's, our traces 
uh, just differ by polynomials with periodic coefficients. So this is, uh, this coefficient uh, is here for that. So after that, the regularized trace may grow at infinity. So we need to take the regularized integral. Again, here we use a uh, Milrow's approach. And since our trace is from this class, it, uh, such integral as t tends to infinity uh, appears to have such asymptotics. that have um, these asymptotics. So the, the asymptotics is basically the same, except uh, yeah, I guess it's supposed to be t here. Um, OK, OK. So again, we just take the 0 coefficient. And just in this case, we, we take the average uh, value. So we just take integral over the period. So this will be our regularized integral. And since we have two regularizations, we introduce the tr bar, which is the regularized integral of regularized trace of our operator. And this is <clears throat> just an additional result that this thing is actually a trace, meaning that it satisfies this condition. Uh, and having this tr bar, we can finally uh, define the eta invariant. So the formula is just like Milrow's one. We take the inverse and we take the uh, derivative by the parameter p. And these are the main uh, results about the eta invariant. First of all, it satisfies the logarithmic property. So eta invariant of a composition of two operators is a sum of eta invariants. And if d of p is just a parameter dependent PDO, just like in Milrow's case, our eta invariants coincide. So just like that, we obtained the generalization of Milrow's eta invariant and consequently at Yapato Dizinga at eta invariant. Okay. Um, now let me tell you some words about the variation of eta invariant. So if we take a smooth homotopy of our operator dt where t from 0 to 1, uh, then first the derivative of eta invariant by this t parameter t uh, equals uh, tr bar over of uh, derivative of this expression by parameter p, by the other par parameter. Uh, so we can define uh, the new trace, uh, the new functional tr uh, tilde, uh, and it appears to be a trace. So tr ab equals tr ba. Uh, and finally, if dp, this is just uh, our operator, we just reminded, uh, this new trace, it's called formal trace, actually. I forgot to write it here. The formal trace can be expressed in terms of the symbol of uh, operator d0. So uh, since the, this d, dk, each of dk is a parameter dependent PDO from Shubin class, Actually, uh, its symbol uh, has, okay, I forgot the word, I guess it's, uh, there is a slide here. So if a, a of p is a parameter dependent PDO, its symbol uh, has the asymptotic expansion, where each a, m of g, is um, homogeneous in the pair xi p. So we take the uh, zero term here, the term d0 in this sum, yeah, we take d0 in this sum, and we take uh, the minus n term in the uh, homogeneous. So here, we take a minus n in this expansion. So yeah, just like that, we can express the derivative of eta invariant in terms of the symbol. And here, t uh, star x is uh, a cotangent bantle. OK, so uh, this is it about the theory. Now let, let us go back to the roots and uh, give an example in zero-dimensional case. So if uh, manifold x is, is just a point, okay, it's just a point, and we have a non-vanishing complex valued function, periodic at infinity. Uh, in uh, geometrical terms, it can be uh, expressed li like that. Uh, and for large enough uh, mod uh, absolute value of p, we have limit functions r plus minus which correspond to plus infinity and minus infinity, and phi plus minus of, of p. 
So R plus minus is uh, periodic, and phi can be either periodic, we will call this uh, condition one, or let's say quasi-periodic. So it's periodic and linear. This will be two. So the first, the first case is when we, let's say this is a complex plane, and at minus infinity there is a cycle. So at some point it goes somehow, right? And at plus infinity, it has another cycle, just like that. So this is the first case, uh, when r is periodic and infinity and phi is periodic and infinity. And the second case is when um, one of the cycles is around zero. So each time it rotates around zero, there is, uh, uh, where it is, plus, we get plus two, two, two pi, just like that. This is the first, this is the second. And we want to evaluate it invariant for such operator, which is actually just a function. So here is the formula, b plus, b minus, and a plus, a minus are given here. And uh, the only weird thing here is alpha. So alpha equals zero in the first case, and phi at the point two pi minus phi at the point zero in this case. And let me give you another um, example with more explicit formula. So if we have a function like this, so this is actually just the first case when we have circles at minus and plus infinity and something here. So if we have a function, so this is z uh, zero minus is the center of this circle. Z zero plus is the center of this circle. And so uh, to find the eta invariant, we actually just need coordinates of this point. And we just need to know n. Let's say n, uh, phi of n is the point where uh, we get to the circle, like when the cycle begins. And this will be phi minus n. All right, knowing these things, we can find the eta invariant by this formula. It's quite simple. We need, like, the we just need to find to know the angles, right? And we will find the eta invariant.